All right, uh, we should be live now. And let's get going here. Good morning, uh, good evening, wherever you are. Good afternoon. This is Opa Ben, uh, Opa Bert, excuse me, Opa Bert, uh, streaming live from Binghua City in Dong Nai province of Vietnam at the Pegasus Plaza, as I do every Wednesday morning here in Vietnam. It's now just after 10 a.m. here, about uh, 4 a.m. in London, UK, and uh, 10 p.m. on Tuesday evening in the U.S. Uh, East Coast. This is Nailing FX. It's Spot Forex Trading Simplified. Here is the schedule for the rest of this month. Today is the 18th, and uh, we are streaming on FX Street. Uh, next week, we will be streaming on YouTube. And then after that, uh, we will see uh, whether it'll be YouTube or FX Street. So make sure that if you want to, make, to uh, get it added to your calendars so that you never miss uh, any of our streams, go to www.tradewithufos.com slash OPA and sign up. All right, so in today's session, today's session, uh, we're going to review last week's trade, review last week's trade, and uh, we'll do a quick review of the 53 and 29 MACD indicators. So that's a set of indicators and try to explain a little better on those. Some had some questions. Okay. Uh, now, let me uh, do this for you. I am going to go into the chat and put in, I copy that, yes. And now I'm pasting in to the chat some links that you can use, right? The links that you can use so um, you can copy and paste them right out of the chat. All right. Should have done that previous. <laughs> All right. Focus on the Z33 channel. We're going to talk about the Z33 channel again. Questions on it. Um, Remember, the, the Z33 channel is a very, very good trend indicator as well as an overbought, oversold indicator. So that Z33 channel indicator is, is very important um, the way we trade here. Um, I'm going to show you how by using the chart grid, choosing the chart grid, uh, it can help you determine whether you want to stay in a position or uh, get into a position, hold a position, whatever, the chart grid. As always, we'll do a little bit of correlation with MT4 so that you can uh, uh, use the trading view for confirmation, further confirmation. And again, we will hunt for some trades. We'll be hunting for some trades. Let's take a look at our attendees here. Oh, we got some folks coming in. Good, good to see you. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into looking at the trade from last week. All right. Last week on the US dollar CAD, uh, you can see this is what, what it looked like at the uh, towards the end of the session. And what we did was um, put in a buy limit in anticipation that price would drop down a little more. Why did I think it would drop down a little more? Because we've got our uh, moving averages, our profile, two of the profile moving average um, lines. We're still showing some strength to the downside. We had the MACD showing strength moving to the downside um, with the um indicator uh the, the these little diamonds the red diamonds uh below coming in below and you can see here where that red that yellow circle is if you can you can see it 
Um, let me see here. I think I can't find it here now. Ah, uh, here, here, this. I think this is it. Laser pointer. Yes. Okay, this might help. This might help here. All right, so you can see here, right there, there we got that uh, yellow circle around around the diamond, the red diamond, and that is an indication that the MACD has now crossed below the signal line and it was below the zero line. So that all of that, as well as down here, we have some uh, MACD conditional indicators and everything was indicating downside, downside, downside. So I anticipated that price would move down. We looked at the trading view chart, found that there was a buy zone, a uh, unfilled order buy area down here. So that was another reason why we set the, the buy limit at this area. Uh, the stop loss was set down below a little bit further. Uh, again, at a uh, trading view uh, area where we saw um, a uh, another buy zone. Okay, so as of two o'clock my time yesterday afternoon, uh, the seventeenth. Uh, this is what it looked like. It looked like well, price did in fact go up and hit our target. But unfortunately, it never went down and took us in, okay? This was this yellow line, this yellow vertical line here is where we placed the trade, where I placed the trade last um, week. Now, I, I want to make sure that you understand that uh, when I place a trade, I have a lot more knowledge and reasoning background for why I could place the trade. I'm trying to explain it. You should not, in any case, simply copy my trades because you don't want to do the work. You need to understand and do the work. And we have lots of different classes that are available to you so that you can understand and trade, okay? Um, this is not a uh, copy service or a recommendation trading service. This is an educational service. When I show you uh, the potential for a trade, it is not a go ahead and put on the trade for you. It's a, an indication that at that point, you need to look at all the conditions and understand that if you want to put on a trade, it is your choice. So I want to make that very clear um, because there are a lot of people that say, well, you know, I, I, I'll just copy OPA's trades. Uh, that's not a good idea because not all of my trades are going to work. We saw in the last couple of weeks, we had a couple of small losses. Yes, they're always small losses. But um, if you don't understand why we put on the trade in the first place, if you don't understand the, the theory, the concept, the ideas, and the risk management that goes into putting on a trade, then you need a little bit more education. And we can provide that to you. Again, I'll show you uh, a little bit later how you can get that. So here you can see on, on this yesterday afternoon, and we'll look at this chart live today. Um, this green was our target, and you can see here Price did, in fact, go up and hit the target. Um, however, unfortunately, based on this yellow line, uh, price never did come down and take us in to take that trade. So uh, I am going to cancel that trade, I think. Um, that's what I'm going to do here uh, a little bit later when we go into the live chart. So I'll, I'll be teaching you and showing you how to cancel a trade once you decide that the trade is no longer <coughs> valid or that you don't want to continue to use it. All right. So that's a quick review of last week's trade. Let's see if we can go to the next.
And now I have to use this. <laughs> All right, so here is a review of the 53 and 29 MACD indicators. Here's just a playing chart, playing chart. Down here, you can see the MACD indicator, uh, which has a histogram and these blue and red diamonds, okay? So as long as the histogram is moving in a positive direction, that means going up, all right, those diamonds will be blue. Once the histogram starts to go down, change direction or is going down, then the diamonds will change to red, okay? Here you can see we have a yellow circle around the red diamond. That's an indication that the histogram, the MACD, has now crossed below, below here, you can see it crossed below the signal line, all right? Down here you can see that we started to see blue histogram going up, increasing, increasing, going up. And at this point where this yellow circle is around the blue diamond, again, it indicates that the histogram has crossed above, above the uh, uh, signal line. So those are areas that are going to be interesting to look at. Now, this green line here, and in some cases, I, I like to coordinate the colors so that they're the same. Um, so this, this green line might be blue in some of my charts. But this green line is an overall, is a, is a longer term look back at what's the trend, what is the trend. So here you can see, here you can see that when we got this, so, uh, yellow circle around the blue diamond and the, this is a 29, the 29, uh, the longer term moving average relative to the, to the uh, MACD is green or might be blue. Uh, we look up here and see where's price, what is price action doing at that point? And now down below here, we have some modifiers to the uh, 29 up in here, okay, this 29 indicator. Um, I've just numbered indicators 29. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of indicators. So this is indicator 29 that, that I'm using. Uh, down here is 25, 29 modified one. This is 29 modified two. You can see that they are slightly different they look at things in just a little bit different way because we can never use a specific indicator, one indicator, to make a final decision. We have to, if you're going to use indicators properly, you need to get uh, multiple indicators that give you an agreement. And so what you see here is we got the uh, circle, okay, we got the circle. The 29 is saying that price uh, or, or that uh, the tendency is for things to be rising, so price should be rising. We look down below, and at the same time that we got this circle, you see here, at this point, we got solid green down in here, okay? Solid green, um, or it might be solid blue, whatever the colors are that you, you want to set up, you can set them up any way you like. But, uh, so that's a good indication that we can anticipate taking a long trade based purely on the MACD 29 indicators, 53 and 29 indicators. That's this set here. Notice I don't have anything else up here. Okay, that's just using this set of indicators, which I would not use alone, okay? I would always have something more for that. So let's go to the next chart here. And here is how we focus on the 
This is what it's called the Z33, the number 33, Zebra in, uh, Indicator 33 is my channel indicator, all right? Here's a channel indicator. And <clears throat> as you can see here, um, when the channel is rising, and let's go to the end here. This was late yesterday afternoon. Uh, when the channel is rising, the trend is up. The trend is up, okay? And it, what, what happened here? So the, the, we got a um, channel dot. Here's the channel dot on the channel indicator. And I'm looking at this channel with the channel dot and the indicator is rising. Now, when did the indicator, when did the 33Z begin its upward move? When did it really begin as a confirmed upward move? Well, I can find that by putting a horizontal line. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for this sort of the, you might want to call it a channel pivot. See the channel was rising, rising, rising. Now, understand that the channel is constantly being updated with data. So when you get the current information, that's when you do it. You go back and do the back testing, the channel may look a little different because it's always being updated with current data. So here I can see that this was where the channel was rising in the past. Uh, and I'm looking at a 15 minute chart here. <laughs> was rising in the past and then started to come down. Now notice what the indications are telling me here is that I got a uh, channel dot, a red channel dot. Why? Because price had moved into the upper band of this 33 channel. So when the price goes into the upper band of the 33 channel, it's telling me that we are basically in an overbought situation. So if we're in an overbought situation, then maybe we should start looking for opportunities to go short, right? Because price will cycle from overbought into oversold, overbought, oversold, or go sideways kind of in the middle of the channel. So here we can see, and again, what did I do here? Price was going up and then it kind of dropped down. I put another line here and I'm looking at this line in the past. Now, this line uh, at the current time would have been very similar. Maybe not exactly the same, but very similar. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, now this is telling me, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at, I got, a, I got a dot. And then I got an alert. Remember this, this arrow here, this is the alert. Okay, followed by an alert confirmation. Now, if this were a daily chart, I would slam into this trade personally uh, immediately. Okay, but this is not a, a daily trade, a daily chart. It is a 15 minute chart. So I have to be a little more cautious and want to get a little more confirmation before I start risking uh, my money. I, I, I'm very conservative. I don't like to risk money that, you know, has a potential for uh, becoming a loss. Okay. I would rather miss a trade than take a loss. Now you decide uh, how you, you want to trade. That's, that's going to be your decision. But in my mind, I would rather miss a trade than to take a loss. So it's all about your trading plan, how you uh, plan to proceed. So now you see this vertical line that, that's in here. And so I'm waiting for more confirmation 
And you can see here, the 29 is definitely showing me a downward move. Now at the point, at this point, um, where price had been going up, maybe the 29 was not uh, as strong coming down. Okay, remember, people say, well, oh, the indicators are repainting. Well, you know, indicators are based on data and what whatever look back period that you have is going to be calculated in the data. So as your look back, as things change, um, the perspective on the chart may change slightly. It's not going to be a big, big difference, but in real time, it is absolutely correct, all right? So here you can see later, few, a few periods later, I got the, uh, the yellow circle and I look down at the yellow, from the yellow circle here or over here and I start to see that my 29 modified one and 29 modified two are showing me downward strength okay so uh somewhere in here now remember uh, this alert and this alert confirmation would have already definitely been in there okay that would have definitely been showing up and so um do i want to take the trade at that point uh, again what is your risk tolerance what do you think is, is going to be the, the best thing for you to do, okay? Now, again, looking, I put this line across. I could put a line under here, but there's nothing to see. So look across here. At this point right here, okay, you can see what my, my uh, mouse is not cooperating with me now. Okay, here we go. All right, at this point here, we definitely see that the channel has, has been going up and looking at it up here as well, we can see the channel is rising. So when I look down here, I can see that we are in an uptrend. Where did that trend start? Well, the indicators say it started back here, okay? But at this point, now the channel is also a, a confirmation of the uptrend and i might want to wait until i get if this was all blue could i could get in here where do i put my stop um i put my stop at the last significant pivot below the last significant pivot make sure that you uh account for spread when you put in your stop right i don't like to take trades close to the middle of the channel, uh, especially in, in, the, in the middle band. The middle band is more of an indication of uh, trend direction rather than uh, anything else. Um, it would have been a good trade, but that's now in hindsight. Um, I prefer, my preferred trading is when price is trading in above or next to in above or next to um, an upper or lower band okay here we had here we had this happening okay and so you can see all of this is part of risk management here at the just a few days ago no not well yesterday so this was yesterday um, you can see price got a confirmation I, I got an alert confirmation up here and so where is price going to go i measure from that confirmation close of the period up to the uh, band up above here and i can see that that's you know i don't know how many pips that is but but compare that to where my stop belongs down here by the rules, right? By the rules, my stop belongs down down here. Um, so I've got an upside down situation on lower time frames. 
Um, not good trades, not good trades. So here's a potential trade um, short. Um, maybe we'll take a look at that uh, as we bring in the live charts. All right, so let's go to the next chart here. All right, now, here is, uh, I don't normally, I usually in the past, I've never shown the grid on a chart. Okay, I've never shown a grid on a chart. But, uh, you know, on the, on the previous chart, we drew this horizontal line. I drew this horizontal line here. Uh, I can avoid drawing those lines by looking at the grid, by looking at the grid. And what's really interesting is look at the grid at the time, at, at the current time, the current period, okay? And I can see here that the channel is, the, 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 the middle band is definitely showing me up. Here, prices is, is acting right in, close to or on this uh, band here. And it's telling me, uh, and I'm looking at all my information, and even though <clears throat> I've got a channel dot, a red channel dot, I've got a um, alert, there's still a, a, a tendency, I would see the tendency here of price to continue to go up, okay? Go up a little bit more. So sometimes price will go way out and continue. You know, you get uh, basically what happens is the brokers, the big banks, they want to increase their liquidity. So they run price way up or way down to uh, take out everybody's stops, right? And then pull it back and go with it. They, they're sucking up all of your money. So that's why you have to be careful. You have to understand what's going on in the market. All right, so using the grid, using the grid can help us determine what's the likely direction continuation here. And if price turns and comes down, if <coughs> and the channel starts starts to move them down direction, uh, it, it's much safer to take the uh, trend in the direction of the channel uh, based on the grid. So you can see here um, the channel was going up, up, up. And how do I know? Because from one end, one side of the grid, one period here to the next period, price was the, the not price, but uh, the, the channel was increasing. Down here you can see the same thing, okay? Now, the closer price action, actual price action, is to either the upper band or the lower band, then that band will take on a little bit more strength, more weight, if you will, uh, for your decision. For instance, down here where price was down here, and I and I can see that the the moving uh, the channel, excuse me, the channel um, was definitely showing strength to the upside. So that helps me. And down here again, when I look down here, I can see that the MACD, the pure MACD, uh, did change. The 29 was still red, okay, still red showing down, and that's because of this move down across here. But the modifiers to the 29 had also started to show strength. So maybe what you want to do is you want to, to create a little uh, um, cheat sheet. Um, and maybe what I'll do is at some time uh, later on uh, identify all the different with yes or no conditions. What's, what's the condition of the... Uh, uh, the buy zone, what's the condition of the sell zone? Uh, do I have a channel dot? Do I have an alert? Do I have a confirmation? What's the MAC? 
and you know just yes no yes no yes no and if you get you know 80 maybe there's 10 10 things that you that you look at and if eight out of the 10 nine out of the 10 or 10 out of the 10 even with 10 out of the 10 <laughs> the trade may go against you so nothing is ever 100 percent but it gives you a better opportunity to make a reasonable decision. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we've got next. All right, so here's a correlation that you can see how we correlated here. Um, this is the trading view chart, and there, there's a little bit of a time difference between the two, you know, setting up one to the other, but uh, not that much. And so if you haven't signed up with TradingView, uh, I give you the, the link. Um, you can get the link from, from, uh, uh, from, the, from the list that I, that I put onto the chat. Uh, you can see the TradingView uh, link. And uh, go ahead and then request the auto phase, that's what these arrows are here, auto phase, and they correlate with the alerts on MT4. Okay? The alerts on MT4 and auto phase are the same. Okay? Now, auto phase does not remove the old alerts. Okay? It leaves them on. So you can see a little bit of history there. Um, price was moving up, moving up, and here these these two moving average lines are actually the, the first two moving average lines of the profile. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for this to, to change direction. Um, and again, you can use down here this information down below, okay? As, and this information down below correlates very closely with the MACD and 29 over here, okay? So we, we always try to correlate uh, and, and get our best information. You can see here on TradingView, we actually get the unfilled order, unfilled buy order levels and sell up in here, all right? So now it's time, now it's time to go ahead and see what's happened on the real charts. Okay, as you know, uh, we always do our analysis in real time charts and identify potential trades. But before we do that, again, I want to remind you that you need to go to www.tradewithufos.com slash OPA um, and subscribe get the free subscription, or you can sign up for other things there as well. Uh, when you go there, you will, you will see uh, how to get put onto the weekly mailing list that tells you all of the sessions that uh, are coming up for the week. So maybe you want to use the MT4 platform as a tool for trading futures or options, no problem. Um, and we can we can do that. Also, um, if you forget the actual link here, you can also do a Google search using Nailing FX Opa Bert, and you'll get a description of the weekly nailing summary videos and all that information will be available to you. Also. On Facebook, you can go to at FX Pips Trading. That'll lead you to Forex Pipsville, where you can again sign up for the group. Uh, plenty of information, lots and lots of things that are available to you. Okay. And now we can end the show. And you can see here I got uh, an alert popped up on U.S. Swiss in the five-minute time frame. We don't really want to use that right now. All right. Now I'm going to bring up this and 
for the moment. Go ahead and open it up. And I believe our trade was on the US CAD from last week. So let's open that one up. And you can see that it is basically going sideways here. Nothing is happening with this. Um, now what I can do here, again, this is daily, daily, and go to the, the chart properties, and I'm going to add the grid on here so that we can see how in live. All right, so looking at the grid, so what, what, when I'm looking at the grid, I'm looking at this last section of the grid. It's flat, right? It's flat here. We're looking at the grid down below here. It's also pretty much flat, hasn't, hasn't done anything, stayed flat, which basically tells me that price is not in a trend. It's just kind of flipping, flipping, flopping around, going sideways. Um, over you know the longer term it, it might be going down a little bit uh, it's changing quite a bit so we there's no reason to continue to hold this this trade so i'm going to take the the grid off here and so this is the uh, i'm going to move this up here Okay, this is the buy limit line right here, buy limit. So if I put on uh, my cursor onto that buy limit, right click, and you see I could modify the buy limit or I can delete it. Now, one of the things that I could do in, in later on in, in our more advanced classes, uh, uh, should you wanna take some, some actual classes to improve your trading, uh, let me show you how you can modify your your orders. Let's say you put on um, six minis, okay, um, and you want to take off two or three or something like that. So you can you can modify that. But what we're going to do right now is actually delete delete this order. So I can just easily click on delete, and there it is. The order is gone. All right. So the order is gone. Uh, so let's go ahead and do a an analysis of our majors. This is this is a majors. Um, let's see. I've got to move this. All right. I want to put that back in there. Put this back up here. All right. So you can see that these are the eight. Uh, there's actually seven, but I've added the Singapore dollar. So we balance out the profile look. Okay. And so here we see the USD in the base position of this currency pair. Here again, USD base position, base position, base position. So that means that looking at this chart, looking at this chart, this chart will reflect the base position. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to modify this one so that we're looking at all the same time frames. US Swiss. Okay. Here is daily, 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 daily. Nope, there's one hour, so let's go ahead and change that to daily. And Euro USD, let's change that to daily. Now, why did I do that? Why did I do that? All right, so this is saying that the current trend on the daily chart, US Swiss, so the dollar is weak, it's coming down. On the yen, it's weak and coming down. Here, it's flat. Canadian is flat. Okay. Uh, on the U.S. Singapore dollar, it's going down, and it's actually gone into an oversold condition. 
So this may be an indication that price is going to turn around, okay? Maybe it'll only turn around on the Singapore dollar, but anytime we get an indication that price might turn around, it could filter back to the other currency pairs on the majors here. Now, there are 28 currency pairs that we could be looking at. We're just looking at the majors right now, okay? So here we see that the US dollar is not in the base position, okay? It's in the what I call the counter position, counter. So that means that if I see price chart moving up, the dollar is actually going down, weakening, because the currency in the base position, the euro, is stronger than the dollar. That's why I see chart going up. So what I see over here, I see the chart going up, dollar weak, dollar weak. Here, chart going up, dollar weak, maybe turning around a little bit here and down in here, dollar weak, possibly changing, turning around oh, down in here. So um let's bring out this price trading in the uh, middle of the channel so there's really nothing that i'm interested in right now uh at this point okay so let's go ahead and go to the euro usd all right and uh let's see again price is trading in the middle of the channel. And let's take a look at the at the grid here. You see here pretty much flat, a slight, slight move to the upside, but pretty much flat. Down here, uh, we've got an expanding, expanding rather than a converging. Um, so it's indicating that price is, is going sideways. So there's more sideways action. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the next one. And here we can see that everything is saying that price should continue to the downside, okay? Downside. Now, I, I would prefer to have uh, the MACD, maybe at the end of today's trading day, the MACD will have crossed the signal line and go down. Okay, but it is definitely showing uh, weakness, price wanting to move to the downside. <coughs> All right. And notice that when I'm looking at the grid, I can definitely see that this is down. This is down. And up in here, it's down. So if I were in this position, I would be inclined to want to hold this position um, rather than do anything else at this point. Now, the other thing that you can do with the grid is you can use the grid to try to identify where you might want to put your stops. And the grid, you know, matches up with price on the vertical uh, scale here. You look at that. Um, Try to find hard numbers. Remember what the hard numbers are, okay? And if, if you don't understand a lot of the terms that I'm using to explain what's going on, what that tells me is you need some more specific education. And so you need to go and check out what the education uh, possibilities are. If you just go online and, and try to find out how everything works for free, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time and effort uh, and get a lot of bad information. And overall, what will happen is your accounts will suffer. Okay? So it's much better to uh, sign up and spend the money for some good education. Uh, there are all different options that you can find at tradewithufos.com for every budget, basically. All right, so let's continue to, to go on here, GBP, USD. All right, so the GBP, USD, uh, and you see that I got this little nick, this little nick here, 
that's telling me that there was some little glitch in the data. And so in order to get rid of that, that Nick, what normally we do is go to the next higher time frame, which is in this case is weekly, click on that and then go back to daily. And you see here, now it adjusted, it, it looked at the, the data and corrected that. So when you see those little nicks in the data where, where things look like it's just not right, it's not a, a smooth uh, movement, you want to go ahead and do that, okay? Uh, okay, I've got a uh, from watch. What happened? I don't know. Somebody asked me what happened. Um, you have to give me a little bit more <laughs> in your question other than just what happened. Okay. Um, you lag of connection or something. Oh, because of the nick you're talking about, the little nick? Yeah, there, there's um, the data that was accumulated for the chart, okay, uh, in one time frame, uh, wasn't enough data for another time frame. So that's why we jump up, get that data filled in, and go back. It's it's not necessarily a lag in the connection. It's just to save to save uh, um, space uh, and your your running time. Um, the, the program, the MT4 platform, doesn't um, just, you know, accumulate all kinds of data and, and continue to hold it for you on, on your, your uh, uh, laptop or your computer. So we need to make sure the data is updated. And by doing that jump up, jump down, up, down activity, uh, we get the data filled in. It's, it's no big deal. You just have to recognize when that happens okay all right good so we're getting close to the end here i want to see a little bit more and here you can see we got a uh, on the daily chart on the euro usd we got a channel dot there's that channel dot now that channel dot again tells me that price has moved into the upper band Maybe it's even gone beyond the upper band, but now it's in an overbought situation, okay? The trend is pretty much flat, so it, it's not moving up fast, it's not going down fast, but it's definitely what? Overbought. It can continue to stay overbought. Nothing says it has to magically change direction, okay? So it's, it's overbought, and then I get the alert, okay, the 48 zebra alert arrow. Once I get that alert arrow and price is trading or has been trading in this area, depending on how much risk I'm willing to take, uh, I would take a uh, short position at the close the value of the close. So let me go ahead and put that in and see. See, now it doesn't look like it on this chart. This is the pound US, it doesn't look like it on this chart. But if I had gotten into that position at the close, shortly after the close, that's a 115 pip move, all right? Now, my trading plan and you have to develop your own trading plan but my trading plan says on a on a daily chart once it's moved 50 pips huh, i am definitely going into a free trade and more than likely i'm going to lock in uh, maybe half of those pips so uh, yes you will wait for these trades to to come out um, but this, this alert trades and alert confirmations, um, the one, two, three reversals, all of these things, these are all telling me that 
I should be anticipating that the the euro, or excuse me, the pound U.S. that the pound at some point here, you know, not today, not tomorrow, but coming up soon, we're going to see a change and a new trend to the downside. To the downside is probably going to start to manifest itself. Now you know that. Um, Trends in Forex last um, a, a good length of time, but trends only trend about a third to a half of the overall time. Most of the time, uh, Forex pairs are moving, chopping sideways. So that's why we need to be very, very careful and watch for our conditions to give us better opportunities right so here's our our Canadian okay that I just closed the position again you see it is uh, flat so there's nothing that and trading in the center so there's nothing there I'm going to take off these objects the drawing objects and just you know there's nothing here let's go ahead and go to the aussie all right so here we can see that we had an indication that price was going to go down price spiked into the uh, upper band of the channel that's why we got the dot simultaneously um, on the aussie we also got a uh, an alert now let's take a look this is the aussie usd daily uh, i'm going to move this over for right now and let's bring up the trading view okay and aussie usd chart adjust that all right and again we need to go to daily Ooh, here we go all right so you can see here can see here that the auto phase indicator right here came in okay um, let's put this down here good so what happened what what do you what do you see here you see up in here my UFOs unfilled orders to sell are sitting up here there's still climate the auto climate is still showing me strength although it's you know been in gone to overbought for quite a while because the strength should have lasted about five periods starting back here and it's now 11 periods so um it continued can continue to move up as it's showing here it is moving up okay so we can see the price what should i um put on a uh, a short order at this point i don't think so i think that there's more possibility there's more probability that price will continue to go up um and i'd like to uh, get a position you can see down in here here is the the area where we have a buy zone a ufo unfilled order buy zone so again correlating the two together now i could uh, go down in time frames and look at different time frames the lower the time frame uh the more trades that you will see however they will be smaller trades um and the 
success rate once you go down into lower time frames uh, becomes less. You're going to be in some places risking less, but you're going to get hit on your stops more often. So you have to decide what it is that you want to do. Okay. So that's the Aussie. Let's quickly just, I'm going to look at the US Singapore dollar and change that over here. And the Singapore dollar looks like it wants to go down a little more. Okay. And again, looking at the channel, you can see the channel. Now, this move down here, this is valid. Uh, it's, it's at the end here. So uh, it's not something that jagged that happened his, in historically. So there is, and the uh, profile, the two profile moving averages are still showing. So I'm anticipating that we are going to see um, on the uh, Singapore dollar anyways, I'm anticipating the price will come down and go into this UF unfilled order buy zone down below here. So um, you might put that on your watch list if, you, if you're going to do that. Let's quickly look at the NZD, NZD, USD, switch that around here. Uh, open this up again a little bit. All right. So uh, here again, the auto phase. You see all these auto phase, auto phase, where where the calculation was saying um, price may want to change direction, may want to change direction. <clears throat> However, um, there wasn't a lot of confirmation that it was going to change direction with other indicators. So though that's the approach that we take. Um, lots of things to learn. Make sure that you stay on top of your trading and um, make sure you sign up. If you haven't got, if you've got an MT4 platform and you haven't got my Zebra indicators and you would like them, send me an email, Opa, FX Opa Burt at gmail.com. I will send you some evaluation copies. Um, you can try them out, see if they work for you, and um, go on from there. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and have a great trading week. Thanks so much. See you again next week.